Hello and thank you for joining the Mindset and Motivation Mastery. In this episode we're going to gain clarity on our goals, decide what action points we need to take to achieve the goals and then actually how we're going to go about achieving those actions. So to start off with we're just going to look at our goal and gain some clarity in it, clarity in it and kind of generate what three things we need to do to achieve that goal. So first of all just going to look at what our values are and what is most important to us in our life. So is this family? Is it friends? Is it work? Is it our health? What things are there in our life that we don't want to compromise no matter what our goal actually is? So for example, say your goal is fat loss, but your high values in life are work and family time then we need to make sure that whatever it is that we're doing to achieve our fat loss goals actually does take into account our values and the things that we do to achieve the goal still help us achieve our work life and family life in a way that gives us enjoyment so we're not just living this diet life and then our actual life but we can actually merge the two. So this leads on to the second point of what areas in our life do we refuse to compromise so what things don't we want to miss out on and change and how can we make sure that when we get to our goal and we work our way towards our goal that we don't compromise those because if we do then when we get to our real life so people go on and off these diets all the time if we get to our real life and stop the diet is that going to undo everything that we've done we don't know so we've got to try and make sure that those things that we don't want to compromise actually work into the diet part of our life too and the last thing to think about is what areas in our life are easiest to change so what three things which is what we're going to talk about next what three things are the easiest things to change that don't clash with our values and aren't the things that we don't want to compromise but what three things could we change that will help us lead to our goal over time it's important to look over these because if we don't then we'll make changes to our lives to achieve our goals but the changes won't align with our values and that when we actually achieve our goal we won't want to maintain that we won't want to carry on so it's not going to be a very aspiring goal to work towards and when we get there it'll be really hard to maintain it so when we think about what we want to achieve like our main goal let's just think about those three things that we could do to achieve that For example, say our goal is fat loss. The three easiest things for us to change might be snacking on fruit, so removing any other type of snack, maybe changing all liquids to zero calorie liquids so we're not consuming any calories through drinks, and increasing our current step count by 3,000 steps. And what we actually started to look at here is behaviour-based goals rather than outcome goals. So these are all behaviour based. So if we do them repeatedly and consistently, over time we'll achieve our outcome goal. These are also important to focus on and celebrate because outcome goals often take weeks and months and even years to achieve. For example, a chin-up. You might do one session a week and do the chin-ups, but you're never going to achieve the actual chin-up in that one session. You can do the practice towards it, but the practice that you need to do will take sessions repeated over weeks, repeated over months, and you might not actually be able to celebrate that final chin up until a year's time. So through deliberate practice, we need to make sure that we're working towards our goal and making sure that we're not, and tracking that behavior-based goal so that we can achieve that outcome goal of the chin up. So having it in, So having our end goal in mind isn't very motivating on a day-to-day or weekly basis because as humans we want instant reward and if we can't achieve fat loss or a chin-up within one session then it's hard. So instead of approaching and monitoring our outcome goal for what it is, we've got to look at the three actions we could commit to consistently for weeks and months to help us achieve our overall goal. This is also important because usually these three things are what we need to do to maintain our goal too so what we're actually doing is building habits that are changing our lifestyle so we don't just reach our goal but we become it taking it back to the fat loss goals if our habits were snacking on no fruit drinking less liquid calories and increasing our steps it's likely that if we went to old habits 
which may look something like snacking on 250 calorie cereal bars or chocolate bars, maybe having toast in between meals or having cappuccinos with all the fancy syrups in or orange juice, fan, full fat cocoa. You kind of get the picture. And if we're doing that with less movement, then we're going to be back to where we were or even worse than before. But if we change those habits and do them consistently, then we're more likely to maintain our result. Which is another point to exaggerate, actually, is that we're an average of our actions and what we do more of is what we become. So one day here or there, maybe having that snack that isn't fruit or having a drink that has got calories in it, one day doesn't destroy our process, but making sure that on average over a week, month, year, that our actions do work towards where we want to be. And this is something that we've all experienced and this is actually called the all or nothing mentality so if we go all out into a war to go 100 percent, then that's that all or nothing mentality and if we can't achieve that 100 percent, then we just go no okay i'm giving up i'll start again on monday of course we can never actually be 100 percent, and if we try to be 100 percent all the time then it, it just doesn't work and you might achieve it for one day but it's not maintainable and again we're always looking for things that we can sustain so we can achieve our long-term goal so what we could actually benefit from is instead of being this all or nothing 100 percent or zero percent mentality you could actually aim to be 80 percent so this gives us the leeway and allows us to forgive ourselves but it's still higher than 50 percent. so we will eventually work towards our goals if we stick to it we're not just going to maintain where we are Another way of looking at this all or, another, all or nothing mentality is to see it as our spending habits. If we plan to spend £500 per month on groceries, meals out, birthdays, and we say that we don't want to spend any more than that per month, but then one month we book a holiday. So that's maybe going over our spending um, goal by £1,000. So we spent £1,500 that, that month. That doesn't mean that we're going to go, oh, you know what? I screwed up this month. I'm going to just keep spending £1,000 here and there because I give up, whatever. Can't only spend that £500. We we just don't do that. We, we spend the money on the holiday and go, okay, let's just carry on with my goal as I was. So we can actually relate this back to our diet. So say we've set a goal of having 2,000 calories a day. If one day we end up eating 3,000, there's no need for us to then go, oh, well, screw it, I can't do it anymore, so I'm just going to carry on having 3,000. But this is exactly what we do. As soon as we can't stick to it, we always seem to want to blow it and have to wait till Monday or wait till the right time for us to carry on with our goal when really we should just pick it up when we next can, just like we would with our spending habits. So if we think back to our three actionable habits that will help us achieve our goal over time, we must make sure that they align with the values, which is what we said at the start. But what we can also do is create exceptions to our actions to allow them to align with our values. So what I mean by this is, say we value having a healthier diet and we gain pleasure and enjoyment from it, then having fruit and snacks rather than chocolate will be rewarding. So that will be aligned with our gut, our values long term. But if we also value family time and we find that occasions are often celebrated and surrounded by food, then it's important to appreciate that and make sure that they also align with our goals too. So an exception that we could have for one of our actions could be that as often as we can, we snack on fruit, but maybe once a week or occasionally in a month, we will enjoy that snack that is separate to our meals and separate to our fruit and maybe is something like cake or um, a fancy cappuccino when you're out with your friends and just that one occasional action we can just enjoy for what it is free from judgment don't have any kind of bad values towards that and just enjoy it because we'd rather do this occasionally and enjoy our lives than have to avoid everything and have guilt and feelings of um badness around having foods like this and occasions as well we don't want to feel bad when we have a nice celebrated occasion just because there's food and calories involved so 
if you have those three actions that you want to stay consistent with to achieve your goal, you also need to have the exceptions that align with our values so that we can make sure we stay motivated to stick to them. But then there's that question of how can, how else can we actually stay motivated to them? Is there a way that we can make these three things easier to stick to? And because we find that life's always, get, always getting in the way and we're too busy and we don't often stick to things. But how can we increase our motivation for that? And the answer, unfortunately, is uh, we don't and we can't. We can't actually rely on motivation to keep us consistent. What we have to rely on is discipline to stay consistent, to see results, and that will give us the motivation to continue. This sounds a bit back to front, and some might think it is, but motivation is actually very unreliable. The changes depending on our mood, which can be affected by sleep, food, our activity levels, people, work, hormones. There's so many things that affect our motivation. So if we want to be consistent with a goal, we can't rely on motivation to achieve it or willpower for that. We must rely on something different, which is discipline and routine. Because when we think about our daily habits, we realise everything fits into, kind of goes one after the other and fits into that routine. We don't actually have to think about it. For example, say we wake up in the morning, it's our alarm that goes off that then results in us getting up, which results in us brushing our teeth, having our food, getting ready, then leaving the house, going to work and doing our routine. We haven't had to think about doing any of that or had any specific motivation for it. We've just done it because it's our routine and one thing leads to the other. And we're able to do this because routine is based off habits that link with our values as well. For example, like brushing our teeth, we don't have to be motivated to do that because our value is having general clean hygiene um, and we value our need for teeth as well I guess so if we make sure that our ha- actions are aligned with our values again it makes it easier to stick to because we don't need that specific motivation to do it we just do it because it's part of our habits so if we link this back to actually the all or nothing mentality so for example with the brushing the teeth if we didn't brush our teeth one morning or we forget one evening or maybe we go to bed late so we can't be bothered that doesn't mean that we go oh you know what I won't brush my teeth until Monday because screw it it's Friday and it's the weekend and we just we don't do that we just pick it up at the next time that we can and again we could do this with our diet we can do this with our training routine just because we've not been perfect and 100% doesn't mean that we can't keep working towards it doesn't mean that we have to wait for a better or more perfect time we just pick it back up when we can and off we go so let's think back to our three actions again and how we can incorporate them into our lives and make them part of our habits routine and stay disciplined well if we take it back to the snacking on the fruit habit we need to have a cue which which helps us stick to this so um, for example, making a pack up means that we've put three portions of fruit in a bag or a box ready for the next day. So we've got something that has has been a cue for us to then put the fruit together and then we get that reward of then having the fruit later on and feeling good because we stuck to our goal. So this is just like if we're training a dog to sit, we say the cue is sit, the dog is in sits, and then we reward it with food. So we just need to find what the cues are to help us stick to our habit so that we can then achieve our goal and achieve that result and that reward. Um, Another example is if we're wanting to increase our step count, our cue could be walking back through the door after a day's work. So that cue straight away is to change our coat, get straight back outside. Or alternatively, if you've got other commitments like children, um, making dinners and stuff, then our cue is actually when everyone's settled, when the food's been cooked, when you've all washed up and tidied, that then leads on to, right, put my shoes on, off I go for a walk. So that is your cue to the, like your that's your stimulus to then lead you on to your next action, which is whatever you need to do to achieve your goal. So finding where it is in your daily routine that 
your habits can fit into or you can prepare for that habit to then resort on later on that is really helpful rather than just going oh I need to eat more fruit it's like well what are you supposed to do with that goal how are you actually going to incorporate that into your day that's what we need to focus on and this allows us to stay consistent and create habits that align with our goals and visions and values so we actually achieve and maintain them afterwards of course it is actually harder to stick to and create things like this at first and because our behavior goals don't lead to our outcome goals straight away they don't make us feel good instantly then it can feel like we're lost sometimes and that we're doing what we're doing is pointless because we're not getting anywhere because things don't happen instantly so what we actually need to do there is instead of working on motivation and willpower we just need to stay accountable so things like having a coach to report back to each week or writing daily or weekly journals or ticking things off they can help us stay accountable so we can achieve the, what our three actionable points are and then achieve our goals. A personal favourite of mine, which I learned from a goal setting book, was um, about these calendars. So you know the calendars that have got the boxes in, like the squares? You just bought one of those and used it as a habit tracker. And all you've got to do is put a big fat X in the box each day that you achieve your three actions. So... This is a really nice visual um, of the goals that you're trying to achieve as well, because if it's somewhere in plain sight, you can see every day that you put an X in the, in the box is another day closer to your goal. And it also links back to the averages as well, because it, if one day you don't put an X in the box because you didn't achieve it, then you realise that that's only one day out of the other 30 in the month. That one day is not going to make a massive difference as long as you don't let that one day lead to a week because you felt bad or guilty about it. It's just one day, next opportunity you can, you just get back on to whatever your goals are and start ticking those boxes again. So these are kind of our daily non-negotiables as well. So you've got these three things to aim for. If you can't do all three, then try your hardest to achieve at least two or one because putting effort into one or two is better than going oh I can't achieve any so I'm not going to do any at all so again using that calendar can help you keep track of that so you know that you're there and it gives you that reward as well and speaking of rewards if you get to the end of the month or even the end of the week depending on how often you feel you need to be rewarded you should set yourself up with something to reward yourself so that it is exciting to achieve this goal you're not just waiting for that longer outcome goal whatever your main goal is like fat loss or achieving that chin up but you actually get into that monthly or weekly goal itself as well so you might say I'll go out with my friends and enjoy a meal without tracking the calories because I know it will work or you might um go away or you might go to the cinema or just treat yourself in some sort of way to say well done for achieving what you've actually done so that's really important as well so that's kind of the summary. So that was everything that I kind of wanted to touch on in the mindset and motivation mastery. Um, Obviously, I'm not saying that we're now all masters or even I'm a master of mindset and motivation, not at all. It just went well in the title. (laughs) But um, as a little summary, we'll just talk over the points that we have covered here. So with your main goal, we need to consider what do we value? What do we refuse to compromise? What three things would help us achieve and maintain the goal? How can we fit them with our values and the things we don't want to compromise? And how can we actually fit them into our routine? And what are their cues so that one thing leads on to the other and it's easier to stick to and we're not just relying on having to do it at some point in the day? And how can we actually track that we're doing those three habits as well? How can we stay accountable? And what rewards are we going to give ourselves when we have stayed accountable to them? Because we can't rely on the feel-good reward of achieving our goal, especially if it's a longer-term one like fat loss or a chin-up, like I keep saying. So as a little end note as well, I just wanted to exaggerate that it's important to remember there's no perfect time to start. There's no perfect journey to go on and no perfect end to a goal. Every goal is a journey consistent of failures and success and successes 
and we need to learn from the failures and the successes so that we continue to grow and move forwards. I remember that no successful person has got to where they are today without failing. And it's so important to fail. And well, as long as we're reflecting on that failure, because what we gain from that failure and reflection is so valuable for the rest of our journey to make sure that we don't do it again. And also because we learn so much about ourselves too. So don't be afraid to start. Don't be afraid to put it, don't don't be afraid to put it off. Don't put it off. Um, and be excited by the failures that you will encounter and be excited for the learning of the journey that you'll go on because where you'll be two, three months or even years down the line will be so much more because you've accepted the failures, the barriers and learned from them than just waiting for the perfect time to start and trying to avoid them. So that's it for today's episode. If you would like any more specific help with your goals be it dieting, training, setting a long-term vision, then please feel free to get in touch. I take on clients on a monthly basis. So if you would like to get in touch, we'll have a little chat and we can get you set up for the following relevant months. So thank you again for listening and uh, be in touch with the next episode next time.